In the wake of the Butlerian Jihad, which resulted in the banishment of all thinking machines, a massive technological void was opened. Over time, humans came to adapt and develop new ways of advancing society and to perform the advanced calculation work that was once handled by artificially intelligent machines. One of the five great schools that served to advance humanity after this jihad was the Order of Mentats. This school would oversee the development of human computers through strict mental conditioning and the honing of an individual's mental acuity. In this video, I'd like to talk about how the minds of Mentats work, how they are developed, and how they are used to serve the powers of the Imperium. While it's true that Mentats at their core all serve as human calculators, in reality, they prove themselves to be much more than that. In fact, the most critical functions performed by the Mentats who are employed across the known universe are in hypothesizing and formulating various strategies and tactics to be deployed in multiple avenues of society. They exercise their advanced cognitive abilities to advise the powers of the Imperium in economic, diplomatic, and military affairs. While each individual varies in skill and capability, any Mentat worth his water could store and analyze large amounts of data and identify patterns to arrive at the most logical conclusions. The tremendous power wielded by the most notable of these human computers often results in predictions so precise that it borders on prescience. Due to its usefulness on the battlefield and in the political arena, many leaders among the great houses of the Imperium were trained to a small extent in the ways of Mentat logic. That being said, only a select few individuals were inherently talented enough to be capable of achieving true Mentat status. Given the motivating principles behind the intergalactic banishment of thinking machines, namely the moral considerations that had been abandoned by the losing side of the Butlerian Jihad, Mentats are typically required to operate within an ethical framework which was seen as a limitation by the more sinister figures in the Imperium. As a result, this framework is not instilled in the beings known as Twisted Mentats, who were conditioned by the amoralist society of the Bene Tleilax. Free from any moral and ethical restraints, Twisted Mentats, such as Pyder de Vries, were able to hypothesize solutions that many would consider abhorrent. As is the case with all Mentats, whether twisted or not, their processing power can be amplified through the use of mind-altering substances such as Sappho juice, which is addictive and stains the lips through repeated use. Mentats are able to assess people in real time, they are capable of reading body language, changes in speech patterns, and facial expressions, resulting in accurate interpretations and understanding of a target's intentions. This requires them to maintain a separation from prejudice, while also holding a supreme understanding of human nature and the preconceptions held by those whom they are analyzing. While not officially considered canon, the Dune Encyclopedia offers several fascinating observations and comments about Mentats. Among other ideas, it provides details on the Mentat trance, from which tremendous feats of inferential linkages and higher percentages of accuracy could be achieved through spasms of pure insight. During such a trance, a Mentat's eyes would glaze over, their voice intonation would flatten as their awareness appeared to be turned inward. In the encyclopedia, it is also postulated that while the development of a Mentat mind would greatly augment an individual's strategic prowess, it would also diminish their ability to serve in leadership roles, especially within the economic, political, or military arenas. This is further supported by the idea that a leader's focus should be on maintaining the proper temperament while making decisions in the absence of complete data. Mentats are trained to avoid making such uninformed decisions, as such their ability to act concisely would be inhibited. Along with this, it is also argued that this could have been a significant factor in the failures of Paul Atreides, as he often approached situations with a reliance on his Mentat training. Mentat minds are typically developed from a very young age, in fact, they are not even aware that they have been receiving such training until they reach adolescence. 
At the point where a prospective mentat becomes aware of this training, they are then able to decide whether or not to pursue this further. In commenting on the development of a mentat's mind, the Dune Encyclopedia attempts to provide more context by expanding on the nature of a child's training, namely that one's sensory awareness would be stimulated and expanded through sound, color, texture, odor, and taste. Kinesics awareness would be developed through spinning, rocking, and the exposure to warmth and cold and a trainee's emotional awareness would be advanced through the stimulation of fear, joy, anger, love, hate, and security. A rigorous training would continue year-round as the child grew to the age of 15, while maintaining a strict and unforgiving disciplinary code. A motto submitted by the encyclopedia for the Mentat Order was, Everything is important, and nothing is more important than everything. Due to a mentat's inherent need for data, it was intended that these initiates be taught to understand every aspect of human living, from the physical to the mental and the emotional. By the time an initiate had come of age, they would need to decide whether or not to commit their minds to the mentat path. Had they chosen to do so, they merely had to wait for the call to be employed by one of the many power brokers of the Imperium based on their strength of skill and their individual proclivities. The Empire's rigid class structure served as encouragement for each man and woman to find their place and to enjoy the security and fulfillment that sprung from serving to advance the intergalactic society of mankind in that position. If the call never came for a mentat initiate, it was not considered a disgrace, as the school could often find a place for them to serve within either educational or administrative roles. Like the products of many other schools in the Imperium, mentats, through the demonstration of their abilities, might at first appear supernatural. However, in reality, Herbert carefully designed these beings in a way that maintains believability in the assertion that these are developed from ordinary humans. The Dune series, at its core, forces the reader to accept the author's assumption of mankind's natural biological growth and progress projected tens of thousands of years into the future and the calculation that given the proper societal structures in place and with a large enough sample size of naturally gifted humans when directed to maintain the proper focus, it's not entirely impossible that a human's critical thinking skills could be honed to a level demonstrated by the mentats of the Imperium. With the mind of a mentat, the author simply took the next step in theorizing mankind's possible evolution. While the argument can certainly be made regarding the drawbacks of relying on the organic components to perform processing, and the need for a human brain to rest and replenish, considering the AI restrictions built into the foundation of Frank Herbert's Duneverse, it seems much more plausible for mankind to commit to this organic method of computing, even with such inherent hurdles. But I'm curious to know what you think of the minds of Dune's Mentats. Do you think it's plausible for humans to achieve such tremendous feats of logic? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.